I'm Udell and welcome to this webinar for Cleat Anatomy. Today I'd like to take a look at the anatomy of the hand and wrist and a condition called carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome occurs when the median nerve gets compressed as it travels through the carpal tunnel of the wrist. Throughout the webinar you can leave a comment if you have any questions and I'll try to answer your questions towards the end of the webinar. Before we can begin to understand how carpal tunnel syndrome forms, we first need to go back to the basics and look at the osteology of the bones. To do this, I'm going to play a recording by Dr. Yasmin Carter, where she introduces the bones of the wrist. Hello, Dr. Carter here again. In the last recording, we discussed the two bones that make up the forearm. Now we'll be talking about those that make up the wrist. In my experience, when you ask most people to identify the wrist, they'll show you something like this. The distal portion of the forearm. But this isn't actually the wrist, it's the distal radius and ulna. The wrist itself is composed of eight carpal bones, and those bones are arranged in two rows, a distal row, proximal row. If you want to understand where these bones are, simply place two fingers along the palm of your hand, resting your index finger on the crease. Your index finger represents the most proximal row, while your second finger represents the distal row. These tiny bones give the wrist its characteristic flexibility because the two rows slide across one another while the individual bones can glide against the next one. At any point, I can pause the recording and investigate the model further. So now we know that the wrist is made up of eight carpal bones and these bones form the floor of the carpal tunnel. The floor of the carpal tunnel is known as the carpal arch and this forms a concave channel to allow structures to pass through it. Using the 3D model, I'd like to help you visualise the rest of the structures that form the carpal tunnel. Let's take a look at the connectives. Here we can see the flexor retinaculum, or more specifically, the transverse carpal ligament. This ligament forms the roof of the carpal tunnel and if I rotate the model, you can see how this tunnel is formed. The transverse carpal, carpal ligament is about three centimeters wide and it attaches on the radial side to the scaphoid and the trapezium and on the ulnar side to the pisiform and to the hook of the hamate. Now let's take a look at what structures pass through the carpal tunnel. When viewing the median nerve, you can see here that it passes through the carpal tunnel. And when I view its nerve origin path, you can see that it carries nerve fibers from the lateral and the medial brachial plexus. And it makes a long course from the shoulder right down to the wrist. You can see here that the median nerve gives off branches in the forearm. And if I fade the transverse carpal ligament, you can see that it also gives off branches that extend towards the digits. This next screen will show you the muscles that the median nerve innervates. As the median nerve travels down the forearm, it innervates most of the flexor muscles of the forearm, the thenar muscles associated with the thumb, and it also provides sensation to the lateral aspect of the palm and the digits. Knowing the course of the median nerve and the structures it innervates is very important when diagnosing its pathology. If the median nerve gets compressed, it can cause pain, numbness or tingling in the hand and this can radiate up the forearm following the path of the median nerve. As well as the median nerve, the carpal tunnel also contains nine tendons. These tendons include the flexor pollicis longus, the four tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis and the four tendons of the flexor digitorum profundus. You can see these tendons very clearly in cross section. So here we can see that these tendons are surrounded by synovial sheaths 
you can see the common flexor sheet that surrounds the, the tendons of the flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus. The flexor pollicis longus is surrounded by its own tendon sheath. Sometimes you might hear that the carpal tunnel contains a tenth tendon, the flexor carpi radialis. However, this tendon is contained within the transverse carpal ligament and not within the carpal tunnel itself. These sheaths minimise friction between the tendons and the surrounding structures during movement. Normally, the, the median nerve and the tendons glide easily through the carpal tunnel. However, if you look at this animation, you will see that when, if the median nerve gets compressed, it can cause carpal tunnel syndrome. Carpal tunnel syndrome can occur over repetitive movements over a prolonged period of time, such as typing or using your mouse all day at work. This can irritate the tendons, causing them to become inflamed, narrowing the size within the carpal tunnel and putting pressure on the median nerve. Arthritic bone deformities can also cause carpal tunnel syndrome. For more information, if you want to learn more about human anatomy, you can check out Complete Anatomy, as well as our undergraduate human anatomy courses and our complete orthopaedic app for more animations. Now I'll see if we have any questions that I can answer. I have a question from Adrian. How is carpal tunnel syndrome treated? Well, there are a lot of treatments for carpal tunnel syndrome, and these include non-surgical options as well as surgical options. The non-surgical options may include rest or a splint or even anti-inflammatory drugs. If you require surgical options to alleviate the pressure on the median nerve, you can check out our complete orthopaedic app where you can view treatment options on this. I'll see if there's any more questions here. I think that's all we have for now. So thanks very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow our social media pages on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. We have a really exciting announcement coming up soon where we're releasing a new app. So stay tuned to our social media pages to find out what that is. Thank you.